Now I want to create the category and repopulate the details and hit the create button. So when we hit the create button, we will have to create a post action method inside the category controller. And in that post action method, we will already be fetching the category object that is populated because we used tag helpers. So inside the category controller, we can copy this create and paste that one more time. Let me stop the application. Inside the parameters, we will be receiving a category object. Let me call that obj. This will be post action method. Now, if an action method is post, we have to write the attribute HTTP post. On top of that, the .NET team has a per. And then we also have to validate the anti-forgery token. Anti-forgery token is there to help and prevent the cross-site request forgery attack. What it basically does is inside any forms that you have inside the application, it will automatically inject a key there and that key will be validated at this step. That key must be valid to prevent the cross-site request forgery. I have explained the cross-site request forgery and the validate anti-forgery token in much details inside free content on .NET Mastery. If you search and look for cross-site request forgery, you can find that video on YouTube and watch that. I do not want to change the focus of this course so we will just validate that token on all of the post request. This is not required, but I will highly recommend that to avoid the cross-site request forgery. Now, once we have the category object that is populated with name and the display order, we want to create that record inside the database. So to do that, we will use our DB context and on there we have the categories. Then in order to retrieve categories, we did not have to write anything else. But when we have to add something to the table, we have the add method there. And you can see it expects a category entity. We already have that inside the OBJ. That is what the user populated. So we will add that to our database. Now once you add it to the database, it is not pushed to the database right now. It will be pushed to the database when you run the command underscore db dot save changes. At that point, it goes to the database and saves all the changes. Once the changes are saved, we have return view here that will take us back to the same category view. Let's say when we are done, let's go back to the index so that we can see the new category that was created. So rather than return view, we want to redirect to an action. We want to redirect to the index action. It will look for this index inside the same controller. If you had to go to an action method in some other controller, you can define the controller name right here. But since we are in the same controller, we can just mention index and that will work. Let's run our application and try this out. Let's go to our category and let's create a new category. I will call this test display order 12 and create. You can see it has been created. If we go back to our SQL server, let me close this. And if we do select top thousand, now we see two records. So perfect, this is working as expected and we are able to create a new category now. But our create category is not perfect. If you hit the create button, you will run into an exception. Let me switch back to the project and you can see the exception is cannot insert null inside the column name. We do not have any validations, but inside database, we said that this was a not nullable column. So when the entity framework code tries to save, it gives the exception. Pretty smart. But we have to be much smarter to handle the validations. Let's take a look at them in the next video.